Rise of Kingdoms vs Lords Mobile and my first thoughts as a low spender. I have prepared 5 short impressions for you. What I the low spender here think about Rise of Kingdoms in direct comparison to Lords Mobile. Before we start out on my 5 points of why I think that one game is better than the other when it comes to low spending, I have to finally introduce myself here to the Lords Mobile community. I am on Element TV, I am the low spender here and I have to do the cutting for this channel, which is not always an easy part, you know. In this channel we have the focus to compare the rail Riga Row, which you already know from the previous Lords Mobile videos in comparison to someone who is more or less low spending in this game. It's me! So some of you might think now that I'm only here because I am the house elf of Riga and that I have to follow everywhere the whale goes. But happily he gifted me a sock a while ago. Master has given Dobby a sock. And now I'm free to go. But as I am a very loyal servant of my former master, you will of course also find me here. Before we start with my first impressions and my 5 low spender thoughts, a short overview about my experience in these games. I've played Rise of Kingdoms now for more than 2 years and had an average budget per month of 100 euro, which is in Germany and looking to Rise of Kingdoms a low spender. And I ended up with the thought, if I would now start again. I would do so much different and I really invested much money and time and I don't want to start all over again because I would have to do so much when it comes to spending, when it comes to the investment in the game to have some progression and yeah, this brings me to the situation that I now can talk a little bit about Lords Mobile because coming to Lords Mobile we talking about my wisely aged opinion of playing Lords Mobile for unbelievable 14 days. So please be always bear this in mind. Without wasting any more time, let's start with my first point. The graphical user interface of those both games have to be compared because when we talk about first impressions, we have to talk about the look of the game. And honestly, Rise of Kingdoms has, in my opinion, a very clean, a very simple user interface with a relatively small amount of pop-ups when you compare it to other games like Lords Mobile and the amount of things you can build, the amount of things you see, the amount of things you can see on the map and so on is relatively... Yeah, not overwhelming, I would say. And definitely, if you are not talking about a KVK with a murder ball with hundreds of players, yeah, you can say in general that it is easy to find your way through the map to the city and so on. So, in that way, I would say Rise of Kingdoms definitely raised the standards really, really high and has a good and mature look. Now, talking about Lords Mobile. Honestly, the user interface nearly made me quit after 5 minutes. If Riga, my lord, wouldn't have convinced me that I should give this game a shot, I definitely would not play anymore because the whole interface, the amount of pop-ups, the amount of warnings in a lot of situations was completely overwhelming and wrecking me down and the number of buildings in the city where you have to scroll to the left, to the right and so on was a little bit like what the fuck I'm doing here? And now after playing for a little while and put my biases aside because I was so much used to the interface of Rise of Kingdoms and the major graphics, if you compare it to a little bit more childish and from my point of view bad graphics, Lords of Mobile, yeah, it was, it was hard for me. Let me say it like that. Having those things in mind. I definitely would say that for a beginner, Lords Mobile is when it comes to the graphical user interface and the amount of things everywhere appearing, not as user friendly as Rise of Kingdoms is. And Rise of Kingdoms really has a high, high standard when it comes to that. Saying that the round one is definitely going to Rise of Kingdoms. Round two, speed of progression and fun to play. 
In Rise of Kingdoms, it didn't took me long before I started to feel the need to speed things up and wanted to grab my wallet to move on forward. Especially when I saw the rankings after a couple of hours in the game and yeah, purchasing speed ups and champs in Rise of Kingdoms would really have blown my banking account in no time. And then I wouldn't even have a big progress because to have the big progress you really have to spend big out there. And the feeling of falling behind was getting even, even greater after KVK1 and KVK2. Now I play for two years, research is done, buildings are done, and it's all about obtaining resources, troops, and speed ups for the next KVK. And yeah, especially in the time in the home kingdom, in between of two KVKs, which is normally 30 to 60 days, something like that, it feels super, super, super boring because you just grind the shit out of yourself. Also, the possibilities of your roles and activities within the kingdoms are, uh, let me say, very limited as a no-spender or no-spender. You can't afford the top gear. You can't afford the crystal tech during the KVK. And with that, you never, 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 never can fulfill specific roles like garrisoning or rally leads even if the person plays for years and is able to obtain very good gear. Not the best gear after the last update normally, but very good gear. The bar is still crazy high of fulfill specific roles and if you miss out on the crystal tech, you will get wrecked by everyone who has spent for the crystal tech. So this really hurts and give you sometimes the feeling that it is so damn hard to progress, especially the longer you play, the level of progress within Rise of Kingdoms is raising, 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 and you have the feeling if I don't start out to spend like crazy, I will lose, lose even more, because especially with new heroes, new metas, and so on, you always fall behind. Lutz Mobile. After playing for two weeks now, I have always the feeling of having something to do of progression. And it feels crazy. I can participate in huge, 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 huge rallies already. I can farm resources, I can do events, I can troop train, I can research, I can do my pets, I can create gear. So there is so much to do right now. And yeah, I know it will become in a certain point of time the same that I cannot build anything anymore, that I am done with research. <laughs> no, I will not be done with research. I will for years not be done with research because there is so much to research and there are specific ways that you can switch in between whatever you want to research and so on. So this is so different compared to Rise of Kingdoms. And compared to Rise of Kingdoms, I even with a very small budget can purchase packages and bundles that give me such a big progression which I never had the feeling in Rise of Kingdoms at all, to be honest, because it is really like spend one euro, two euro, three euro, and be able to train several hundred or several thousand of troops. You get resources for days of playing without farming for one or two euros from time to time. So. The number you can get for spending your money is so damn big that it feels crazy. And as Riga already mentioned in his first source video, which I'll link for sure above, it is something special about Lords Mobile, which is completely different compared to Rise of Kingdoms. You always fight in your own kingdom. You always fight, so there's always something going on. So if you want to fight, you just go online and start fighting. So this feels so good. And even if you are not a big spender, there are so many ways of playing Lords Mobile. You can be a trap without spending big. You can be a goddamn badass trap that really hurts other people. If you are not online for several days, just shield. You can purchase shields for a small amount of numbers of gems and shield for several days. It feels so good that you know 
I am safe. And even with this whole ability of catch enemies leading commanders, you can do so hard damage and be such a great value for your kingdom even if you are a low spender. That is completely ridiculous. And saying that without saying anything else. At this point, this round definitely goes to Lords Mobile from my point of view right now. Round 3 Variety and values of events. Rise of Kingdoms has more or less a very fixed set of events. All public holidays are sets of bigger events that normally combine with paywalls and spender package that you need if you can't play a lot during this period of events. So further you have rolling events like the Karuka event, you have as well the Golden Kingdom and yeah that are occurring every other week something like that in different orders. Also you have to mention the Wheel of Commanders where you can yeah or you need a truckload of gems to have the chance to obtain some speed up, some commander heads and so on. So you normally most of the time just go for the commanders for sure. This is what you want to have, but it's like I say, a wheel. So you just spin and hope for your luck. And then in the past two years of playing Rise of Kingdoms, I can not really remember. It was a very small variety when it comes to, yeah, new events or something really really special where I was happy to have it and was like yeah this is a great event I can proceed within that event so much and have great and big value the the most loved event is the pre kvk for me to be very honest where you can do a lot of things to get good really really good rewards that I actually like and I really have to say that there are a lot of events in Rise of Kingdoms which I not play on a regular basis because I don't want to put my time into it because they are not really valuable for the amount of time I would need to yeah, do what I need to do there. So coming to Lords of Mobile. Okay, to be fair, I do not play this game for very long so I am not really sure about if those are all events that are happen every other week but the number of events since i started out was completely ridiculous there was every day something special you have a lot of events that are completely free to play you have events with yeah paywalls for sure but these paywalls are not that high to be honest for most of the events yeah there are one two events that are have ridiculous high paywalls which I as a low spender never would go for but however there are a lot of events that are really giving me completely wrecked value um, and this is super nice and even if I spend money as a low spender I always get coupons I get extra rewards just by purchasing through their shop and this is really really nice because when I get gems for free when I get rewards for free it's always nice especially as a low spender when you have the feeling get big value for small amounts of money and yeah let me state one example there's for example this one the, there's one event it's called lucky card event which I like that damn hard and just to give you some some feelings if you are completely free to play you can get 999 gems for free. Fair enough, as a free to play player, this event is so easy to go for that you can take these gems for sure with you, but it is not really valuable. But if you are a low spender and you can focus your spending for this event, you just have to purchase four or five dollar bundles and that give you the normal value of the bundles you purchase for sure. So if it is a special bundle, you might even get more for this $5 you spend on. And then you unlock two more slots for your lucky cards, which means that you then not get 999 gems. No, no, no. You then get 99,999 gems if you get wrecked on this event. And if you spend another 10 dollars so you just waste them you do not can purchase packages for that you just waste those ten dollars into this event 
you can claim the reward double, which means you get 200,000 gems. 200,000 gems for 30 euro. Just to give you an insight, 22,000 gems in a normal gems shop in Lords Mobile are worth $100. That means you get the value of $900 normally for 30 bucks. And since I've started playing, we had those events two times and we talk about two weeks. Imagine how mind blowing it helps my really, really young account out if I spend my money on that. And I think even though if you're not a low spender with 100 bucks a month, 30 bucks is really what you can afford most of the time, even as a low spender in a month. So if you just wait and single spend all you have on exactly what you need during this event, you can have such a big, 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 big value out of that. And this is something I never have seen in Rise of Kingdoms at all in two years of playing. Saying that, nothing more to add. This point is as well definitely going to Lords Mobile. We are now already at round four, the access to paid content and speed ups. When you look at Rise of Kingdoms, you definitely have to say that you only can get your hands on premium content by purchasing them in the shop or grinding like mad ass badass. And saying that, I really talk about grinding thousands of barbarian forts over the time to really upgrade your city to a high level. Which on the one hand is really nice because you show off a big bunch of effort you have invested to get there. On the other hand, I really have to say that sometimes it hurts the community from my perspective of you because if a whale, if an old account would be able to share what he does not need to a younger player, to a friend, you always would get new people into the game, you could include other people's better and if someone is really needing something and is not able or willing to grind like crazy just to process or proceed with a specific thing in the game and would quit out of this reason because he has a wall which he cannot go through. This would help out a lot. And I think it's a missing opportunity of Rise of Kingdoms to not have something like that. You don't need to have to be able to share everything, but specific items that really help out your account to progress in general for new players, for example. And there we come to Lords Mobile, because Lords Mobile exactly has a mechanic like that. You have for sure a paywall to be able to share things with other players, which is a $100 bundle you have to pay on your account once. But as soon as you have purchased it one time, your account is free to share your items. And with that, I talking about things like speed ups, for example. And this is something which really helps you out to yeah, strengthen the community, to strengthen the alliance, to strengthen friendships within the game because one can help out the other. And if someone is spending big or has an old account, he easily can bring a friend to a level that starts to give you fun in the game. Let me state it like that. Yeah, I mean, there's always a black market. We don't need to talk about this. You always can use it on app use it. But however, this paywall already ensures that you have not as hundred and hundred bots accounts that are sharing stuff. So this is really good from my point of view. And I really like this game mechanic and really would wish that Rise of Kingdoms had implemented it. And saying that, you can abuse those game mechanic in Lords of Mobile for really funny things. Because you, for example, have this whole, you can imprison or prison the leading commanders of your enemy. So if you, for example, build a trap, you trap the enemy's commander, you can migrate into another kingdom, still have the leader in your prison. And then you can say, for sure, you can have your leader back if you give me something like blah, 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 you know, stuff. And this is so funny because it gives you a big, big deepness into the game. It's strange in your community and it's a lot of fun, obviously said. So I really like this mechanics and that's why I definitely have to give round four as well to Lords Mobile right now in my first impression. It's finally time for our final round five, the comeback ability in Rise of Kingdoms and Lord Mobile. 
So start out with Rise of Kingdoms. In Rise, we all know that depending on how good your tech and your hospital is, you lose an enormous amount of troops if you get, as the name said, zeroed. Even if you just fight for flags or buildings, you can lose enormous amount of troops and power very quickly. That is extremely expensive to train again. And expensive not just from a resource perspective, but as well from a time or speed up perspective. So if you get caught off guard and lose most of your troops, it could take you weeks or months, for example, as a free to play or low spender player, to get your power and troops back again. And let me say the obvious thing. If you are nearly have no troops left, you can and you have not much to do in this game. In the two years I now play Rise of Kingdoms, this normally leads to two things for the players that get zeroed, especially for low spenders and free to, free to play players. This is either that they quit the game completely after getting zeroed once or that you have more or less more or less people without fun because they are not able to participate in the fun activities for weeks, which let you hate the game in some points, I would say like that. So then we talk about Lords of Mobile and in Lords of Mobile, you can lose big numbers of your troops when someone zeroes you. Obviously, it is called zeroes. However, the comeback potential in Lords is from my point of view, and that's why I'm already smiling like crazy, better adapted to this more continuous existing fight behavior that you have in Lords Mobile compared to Rise of Kingdoms. Because in Rise of Kingdoms, you have this one times event in, for example, the KVK and then uh, like freedom phase. And then you have in Lords Mobile fight over fight over fight over fight. So you need to come back really, really quickly. And this, yeah, is the funny thing. Here you have as well a hospital. And when I say here, I mean in Lords Mobile. It is called the infirmary. And you can decide on your own how many such infirmaries you want to build in your city, which is already funny because it's a strategic decision how much people or how much of your forks from the soldier perspective that are getting wrecked during a fight you want to heal up again. And each of those buildings, those infirmaries, those infirmer, and each of this building, so the infirmary, can take care of 40,000 wounded soldiers that you can exactly like in Rise of Kingdoms heal up again for resources and if you want speed ups. So, but there is another thing that is funny and crazy at the same time. It is called the Sanctuary. For a part of the troops that are really dead dead, so I mean not back in the hospital so that you can heal them up, but they are dead. They are landing in the so-called Sanctuary, which is a really big portion of the troops you're losing actually. And there you have the opportunity with some devotion, which you can do by farming and which are automatically are generated to bring your troops back. You can bring them back. So this means you have some troops you can heal up. You can have some troops that you can by doing quests over a couple of days or one, one day, depending on how much troops you have in there, um, you can heal them up completely. So you bring them back and you just lose a small portion overall of your whole troops. I mean, it still hurts and you lose might, so which is the equivalent to power and rise of kingdoms, but still you can come back very quickly. So I just started out playing. I was one time 15 minutes late, got zeroed already. And now I'm completely back after a couple of, I think it was one and a half day and I was completely back to the point I was one and a half days before when I got zeroed. If I would have the same happening in Rise of Kingdoms, I would be like two, three weeks at this point of time back. So uh, a mind blowing, a really, really mind blowing experience for me because I was really like, no, I got attacked. And then I was like, 
Okay, I have 75% of my troops back, feeling like that. I'm fine, I still can do everything I normally do, just with a small amount of troops overall, so I cannot have five marches, just four marches out there. It was fine. It was just fine. It was like a feeling of, oh man, that's bad. But yeah, there, there are my troops again. <laughs> and for, uh, I really I, I really can't control my face when I talk about this topic because it's so ridiculous how fast you can come back there. And that's why, guys, my first impression, my first feeling about this game is, man, the fuck, so that you keep the players playing, so that you do not lose everyone that is getting wrecked at the beginning, that you don't lose players that play for a year that get really, really hit hard so you keep them in the game because they just bubble up for one two three four five days bring their troops back train a little bit more spending a little bit of money if they want to and then they are back on the field again with a lot of power with a lot of fun and this is what i like so much and if you really have a conflict and it feels like a never-ending conflict, you just migrate out, you just go. It's not like in Rise of Kingdoms where you feel trapped in the kingdom. You just go if you don't feel good in the kingdom anymore. You just go, it's fine, leave it, leave it, do whatever you want. And that's why I've said it already, round five is going to Lords Mobile. And with that, we have to come to a conclusion, the final scoring, Rise of Kingdoms 1, Lord Mobile 4. It was disastrous. When I look now with my experience from Rise of Kingdoms and my Thirst Swords from Lord Mobile on those two games, and it feels a little bit like I've, I've wasted two years for the wrong game, to be very honest. I mean, for sure, it might be a first impression and I definitely will play Rise of Kingdoms further because I want to proceed in the game as well and see where it develops too. However, Lord's Mobile currently gives me a great feeling while playing. And to be very honest, Rise of Kingdoms is a big part of my daily life over the last two years, so I've played a lot in this whole time, but now having Lords Mobile on my side, I really feel like it could, it could be the future game for me. I need to experience it way more, it will take several months before I really can take a decision on that, however, I will keep you continuously updated. I am 100% sure that I will see new points as a low spender that really make me thinking of why I think that Lords Mobile might be better or not better or worse, however, compared to Rise of Kingdoms or maybe other games. And that's why I just can say, if you want to start out, don't forget to use our Rigaro Gaming. So finally, I have to say, I definitely will play both games for another couple of months, definitely to get really a big overview about what we have to expect. And if you want to subscribe this channel, feel free to do so because it costs you nothing, but helps us out to grow. And if you want to know something about Lords Mobile or Rise of Kingdoms, just put it down in the comments and we will answer it. And I hope that this little first impression of the five things that I think as a low spender are so nice and my first thoughts about the game, then also leave a like in the comment down there. Wish you a pleasant day. See you. Bye.